hello everyone and welcome back to the channel i hope you all are doing absolutely well so guys in this video we are going to prepare for your upcoming technical assessment preparation for cluster one which is java so if you have seen the syllabus in java programming you have clicked coding and in that you have topics like problem solving searching sorting string handling arrays and collection control flow statements right so we are going to study all of that this is going to be like one short cheat sheet for you within one video you will get the practice of all the concepts okay because mostly from java you will get from this cluster you are going to get a coding question which you need to focus and apart from that you have mysql and html uh, related questions for which i have already uploaded the video make sure to check that in the playlist that i have on the channel okay and also before we start the video if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet make sure to do so because it's, it takes a lot of hard work to create this kind of content for all of you let's quickly go through the syllabus that we have so in cluster one you will have java programming java programming this is the syllabus that is problem solving searching sorting string handling arrays and collections control flow statement working with date and time exceptional handling and object oriented programming okay so we are going to look all of this in this video and about this i have already created a video separate one okay make sure to check that if you want to prepare about this section also and about this i have already uploaded a video in which i have covered almost 20 previous year multiple choice questions and previous year questions related to sql also make sure to check all of that content in the playlist let's now start with introduction to java programming so first of all what is java okay java is a widely used object oriented programming language designed to be a platform independent it follows the principle of write once done anywhere which is also called as vora meaning java can run on any system with the java virtual machine we call it as java jvm okay some of the key features of java strongly type language okay every variable must be defined a data type and garbage collection java automatically manages memory to prevent memory leaks perform independence java performs java program can run a different operating system without any modifications okay what are the problems solving in java what is problem solving in java okay so problem solving in java involves understanding the problem statement reading and analyzing what the problem requires breaking down the problem into logical steps that is dividing the problem into smaller and manageable parts which we call it as divide and conquer choosing the right data structure and algorithm selecting the most efficient way to store the data and process it and then writing efficient and optimized code implement the solution while ensuring the performance and readability using this principle java developers can create reliable and scalable applications so we have read some basic theory part now we are going to look into the code part okay so the first example code that we have is find the largest element in an array let's see the code for it see here we have the code for it okay so this is the class that is largest number and that we have the main function here we are defining an array which has integers in it okay assuming the first element is the largest so we have the max variable inside that we are assuming that the first element of the array is the largest then we will loop through the entire array to find the maximum number okay or, and what we are using for looping we are using a for loop and every time we are doing a condition check if our uh, like we have to compare each element with the max value okay if our max value uh, is greater if, if our max value is smaller than the current number then what we will do we will update our max value with the current number okay and in this way once the entire loop is done we will just finally print out our max value this will give the largest number in the array okay hope you have understood it so uh, in order to see it pause for it try to understand it if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section let's quickly jump on to the next uh, code which we have so this code is for searching algorithm okay so see linear search we have a type of searching which is called as linear search which is used for unsorted or small data sets it checks element uh, each element one by one basically uh, so you will be having an array okay basically in a linear search what happens every element will be searched one by one okay so let's see what is happening here we have a class linear search and in that we have a uh, this search function which is taking the integer array and the key to be searched okay then we are running a loop from zero to the array length which means to the till the end of the array and then we are checking one by one if the key is found or not if it is found we will find the index of that particular key which means that the uh, like key is found okay and at this position that is what our main purpose is and if it is not found we will return minus one for example if we have the input as uh, one two three and four okay and then if our uh, uh, key is if our key is like three so what we will do see first of all we will uh, traverse or iterate okay one by one so one uh, we have not found it we will move forward two we have not found it three we have found it so what we will do we will give the index as the output of this uh, this position okay so the correct answer for this question uh, this input will be uh, two okay because we have found our key at second position hope you have understood it let's move on to the next one 
binary search okay so binary search is what it is used for sorted arrays so in order to implement a binary search the condition is that the array should be sorted if not you need to sort it first then you need to implement your binary search so it is efficient searching with big o of log and time complexity and it is using divide and conquer approach okay let's see the code that we have here so see we have a binary search class in that we have created a binary search function which is taking an integer and again a key to be searched okay uh, sorry integer array okay it is taking an integer array on which we will perform the search operation and then it is taking the key uh, which needs to be searched in the array okay so see the concept of binary search is something like this if you have an element some array okay array of elements something like this and if you want to find a digit like 4 okay what you will do you will first of all find the midpoint of uh, this array and then you will compare this number with your key value okay if the key value is greater then you will find it in the left uh, like in the right part okay and if it is smaller your key value is smaller then you will find it in the uh, this part okay left part and you will for example if you have found uh, if you feel that uh, when comparing if you found out that your key value is smaller and you are going to find it in the left part okay then you will eliminate the rest okay that is how the time complexity is uh, like it is taking a lot of uh, less time let lot less time as compared to the normal linear search okay let's see the code for it then you will understand better so see initially what we are taking we are taking three variables left right okay and uh, left and right basically why left and right because i told you right we need to do a condition check so left will be our left variable and right will be our right variable okay and every time we will check with our uh, we will check okay whether if our uh, value is less or not okay so these are kind of pointers for us so we are running a while loop and we are checking if left is less than equals to right which means we don't have to reach a condition if our in such a way that our left becomes greater than right okay this we don't have to do we we will increment left value one by one in such a case that left stays here and right stays here okay then we will stop our searching okay see yeah so where left is less than or equals to right and then we will find the mid value okay mid is what we will calculate using left plus right minus left by two this this is how we will calculate the mid and mid will be directing redirecting somewhere in the middle okay then we will do the condition check if array of mid that is the mid value is equals to key if it is our key value that we are searching okay then just return the mid value itself okay mid as in the mid uh, index okay like you have to give the mid index not the value because value is already the key that we have right and if it is not then we will do another condition check which i told you that is array of mid which is the value it, we have to check if it is less than key if it is less then we will what we will do we will increase uh, we will increase the value of left okay otherwise we will what we will do we will uh, update the value of right okay that is all i already explained you this concept right so this pointers will change and based on that we will break the uh, search area into half okay in this way every time our array will divide into half okay the half part will be eliminated uh, in which we don't have to search anymore we will only search in the remaining left pa half part okay and even after searching the entire like array we didn't found anything so at the end we will give a big condition which is minus one that we have not found uh, this key in the array hope you have understood binary search implementation let's move on to the next one which is our uh, sorting algorithm so like we have bubble sort okay so bubble sort is also a basic sorting algorithm that we have so it is also following the same it is basically used for performing search only so let's see what is happening here we have a class okay and then we have a sort function which is expecting an uh, array okay so in that what we are doing we are first running one loop and then we are running another loop and then we are doing a condition check if array of j is greater than array of j plus one then we are doing the swapping okay and then finally uh, like swap why is this swapping so swap if the elements are in wrong order so basically this swapping is for swap if the elements are in wrong order okay so this is basically the implementation of your uh, 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 bubble sort alg algorithm and uh, it basically what it does is it repeatedly compare the adjacent elements and swap if they are in the wrong order and then it rearranges it okay so this is a sorting algorithm okay you have to understand this is a sorting algorithm and not a searching alg algorithm so for example if you have like two one four three right so this algorithm what it will do is it will convert your unsorted uh, array into a sorted array okay that is why we are not taking the key to be fine because we don't need a key we uh, we need to sort the given array that is there okay and the sorting principle i told you it will take two things it will compare both of them and it will swap it okay then it will move forward and it will do the same on the rest too that is bubble sorting next up we have quick sort okay 
uh, let's see the uh, quick sort implementation so in quick sort we have again a uh, class quick sort and then we have the function quick sort which is expecting an array low and high value okay so first we are checking if the low value is less than uh, high value then for what we are doing we are sorting the left part okay sort left part this is for that okay so we are recursively calling the quick sort okay again then this is for sorting the right part okay sorting the right part and then we have this uh, partition function okay this partition function is like choosing the last element as pivot choosing last element as pivot i'm not digging deep into it because this is like a i want to cover or touch the topics and i'm my goal is to give you the code so that you can read it on your own because you know the entire explanation of sorting algorithms can't be covered so i'm not digging deep into it i'm just telling you the major parts of this uh, codes okay so then here what is happening is array of j is less than pivot which means element is smaller than pivot okay we will take a pivot in this case okay element is smaller than pivot and finally in temp in this place what we are doing is placing the pivot at correct position so uh, at the end you will get the like uh, correct uh, you will get your correct sorted array okay once the entire thing is done so it is choosing a pivot which is the last element partitioning the array into the elements smaller than the pivot and the greater than the pivot and recursively sort both okay so for example if you have one two three four five okay this is sorted but we need to take a unsorted one okay so three two four five one something like this this will be a pivot okay and then what it will do it will partition this array into two parts okay one which is greater than it and one which is one which is all the elements greater than it and one which is all the elements smaller than it okay so maybe like i should take an example like four here and then one should go here okay so how it will take is pivot will be here and then it will put all the greater ones here and then smaller ones here again one more pivot will be selected and in this way it will recursively follow and sort the array that is given to us okay next is your string handling in java okay so common string operations are your caret index length function to lower case to upper case trim function and replace function or method okay so here we have taken an example of reversing a string so see what we are doing is uh, we have a class reverse string and then we have the main function which is taking strings okay and then uh, string is our cognizant okay so what we are doing is uh, we are creating a variable reversed and new string builder dot reverse dot to string basically we are converting and then converting it to uh, like basically we are reversing and then converting it to string again okay and then we are finally printing out reverse string and the reversed value okay so here we have used string builder for reversing the string okay hope you have got it next now let's move on to this part which is arrays and collections so array example is find the sum of all elements okay so we have this we have taken this example code where we need to find the sum of all the elements of the array so let's see see what you will do is in this case uh, we have array sum as the like class and then main function we have taken the numbers one to five initially we are setting the sum value as zero and then we are iterating over every every element okay and whenever we are getting a new element what we will what we are doing we are adding this to the sum value so initially our sum value is zero then when we encounter one we will add it to one so now our new value is one some value new sum value is one then we will encounter two so we will add two to that this will give us three in the same way we will keep on adding it adding up okay so then finally we will get the total sum value and we will just print out that okay so this was the example of finding the sum of all elements moving on we have this example of collections okay so for collections uh, uh, we have like in collections we have array list right so let's see this example in this example what we are doing is uh, we have a class array uh, list example okay and uh, in this we have main function and array list uh, we are what we are doing with new array list and then we have the values in the list like uh, java python and c++ and then we are printing the list values okay this was your example for array list let's see control flow statements now in control flow statements we have like if and else right so uh, in control flow statement let's see what we have uh, if else based example i have taken okay so control flow example is the class and then main function which is taking the string okay so our in initial number is 10 and then we are checking if number mod 2 is equals to 0 basically the main aim of this is to explain how if condition works okay that's it so it is just checking if the number is an even number or an odd number so if it is mod, mod 2 means if it, it is divisible by 2 so we will just print out even number otherwise we will print out odd number okay moving on 
uh, working with date and time okay so we have date and time uh, based questions also you might get so for that what you need to do in this one what we are doing is display current date and time so see we need to import java.time.local date time and then java.time.format.date time formatter okay then we have class date time example main and then it is taking a string so local date time now is equals to local date time dot now function we are using and then date time formatter with this we are formatting the date time okay so and we are mentioning the pattern in which uh, we want the formatted date and time so then uh, finally we are printing the current date and time in this format okay that is uh, the formatter variable will have our formatted value of date okay date and time so hope you have got it moving on to the next one which is exceptional handling okay so in exceptional handling uh, what uh, the example that we have is handling division by zero exception okay let's see what we have so we have a class exception handling and we have a main function which is taking a string okay and then here what we are doing we are doing try catch okay so in try what we are doing uh, we are performing division by zero that is in the result variable we are taking 10 and then dividing it by zero then in the uh, catch statement what we are writing arithmetic expect uh, exception e and then printing cannot divide by zero because dividing division by zero is an exception so uh, for exception handling we use try catch to handle runtime errors and it prevents program to uh, program from crashing due to exceptions okay next up we have object oriented programming so in object oriented programming we have different concepts right so one of the concept is inheritance that is what we are looking here in this example so let's see we have a class animal and then we have a function sound okay so this function what it is doing it is just printing a statement like animal makes a sound okay then we have a new class which is dog which is extending uh, animal okay so dog extends animal and then we have the function so that we can use the function sound and then it has uh, the statement dog barks okay so here what is happening is class dog inherits animal class okay class dog is inheriting the animal class okay and then we have this uh, inheritance example so uh, simple inheritance example class where we are having our main function dog d is equals to new dog okay so inheritance basically allows a subclass to inherit the properties of parent class and method overriding enables subclass specific behavior okay so i have tried to cover as much concepts as possible in this video i know that there is no, it is not possible to cover every single part of it because it is java is a big thing uh, we cannot learn within like 10 minutes or 20 minutes but i have tried to cover as much as possible so that you get the most out of it at your end moment it will be a good revision for all of you if you have any doubts related to your technical assessments you can ask me in the comment section i try i will try to answer 100 percent of the comments that i get on this video okay so make sure to comment if you have any query you can join me on telegram and instagram if you have any other queries you can ask there also make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it because you will get all the latest regular notifications if i post any updates in the future so that's all for this video thanks for watching the video i will see you next time